Hello, hello guys. I'm here with Cabo and we just saw Sespling's video on um, the slime block drawbridge. So just to show what it does, uh, it roughly looks like that. He had some more redstone built about it, uh, around it to move it back and forth. But uh, just one way, if I turn this clock here on, you see uh, the slime blocks get moved to over here. Even though that, that might uh, be a little weird because if this slime block gets moved, you would think all the other slime blocks get moved as well. And in this case, they, they just uh, only get moved in the one direction, but not in the other one. And we want to try to explain you um, how this thing works. We'll just fix it here. Uh, so over here, we got, uh, got built up the, the basic concept without a clock. If I um, throw a torch on here, it will give a short pulse and trigger this piston for a short time. And then with some delay, uh, trigger the other piston over here um, with a short pulse. And yeah, then you can see it happening. Uh, the slime block here gets moved back, but all the others don't. And um, yeah, to explain how this works, we need to understand how exactly sticky pistons and normal pistons uh, work in that case. Um, they have a little difference there. It is important that we got a sticky piston on this side. On this side, we can have a sticky piston or a normal piston. It doesn't matter. Just on this side, it needs to be a sticky piston. Um, and yeah, I will uh, try to explain how sticky pistons and normal pistons behave different uh, over there. So let's get to it. Over here we got a normal piston and um, we, we build it up so that each of these wool colors uh, represents one tick. So this one would be uh, the first tick where there's no redstone pl torch placed, then in the next tick uh, a player places a redstone torch and stuff happens and so on. And uh, we will go through the behavior tick by tick. Then also, um, yeah, one thing you need to know if a piston moves, block, moves blocks, it will turn them into block 36 uh, or into the block t piston extension, I think it's called. Like, uh, let me just try it out. Set block Minecraft piston extension, it should be. There we go. Um, now you see there is this invisible block here because uh, it ha has n not the right values in it. Um, but when a piston moves blocks, uh, it turns them into block piston extension or in the block 36 as it what co was called in the past and uh, saves what blocks is stored in them. And yeah, we represent that by class. So all the class here is block 36 every time or represents block 36. And on top we got which block is stored in it. So for these two block 36 it would be uh, lapis and the extended piston arm. Um, yeah, but that's, uh, that covers how, how this uh, schematic uh, show thing works here. Um, let's try to go through it. So first uh, first thing is simple, just a normal piston with a lapis block in front and yeah, the redstone block back here. Then when the torch gets placed, the piston extends and turns the block in front of it to block 36 and also turns the lapis block uh, to block 36 and uh, yeah, moves it one to, to the side already. So. When the piston starts extending, there's a block 36 uh, with, which stores the lapis block where the lapis block will uh, stop moving later on. And yeah, so you see it, piston arm and lapis block in these two blocks down there. Then one tick later, the redstone torch will realize, oh, I got placed on a redstone block and turn off again. Now that will cause the piston to retract again. So this piston here will then retract again. When the piston retracts, um, it will, uh, yeah, destroy the piston arm or the, the block 36 with the piston arm in front of it um, and uh, yeah, set itself to block 36 um, with the um, piston base block. Now the lapis block is still block 36, nothing changed about that if it's a normal piston um, because yeah, block 36 needs uh, two ticks till it turns into a, a normal uh, block again. Um, and that's what happens in the next step. So in, in the next tick here we see um, that the lapis block got placed again. So uh, the moving of the block was done. Um, and it placed the lapis block again. And then in the next tick, the um, moving of the piston will be done and the piston placed it itself down here. And yeah, then we got, got the whole situation finished. So um, to show it in real time, that's it. We just showed it a little slower here. Um, next up, uh, we got the sticky piston over here. And um, then we want to show the special behavior for it. It's again the same way to show it. Um, so we uh, place the torch there. We just, we just, uh, wait, we just mis made a mistake here. There shouldn't be a uh, torch. So um, here, now it's correct. So uh, if the torch gets placed, the sticky piston extends, turns the, blocks, uh, uh, the block in front of it to a uh, block 36 with the piston arm, the block one in front of that to, to the lapis here, uh, to the block 36 with the lapis. Then um, one tick later, 
the sticky piston will, or the torch will realize that it was placed on the redstone block, uh, turn off, the sticky piston will retract again, breaks the um, block 36 in front of it, and now that's special for uh, sticky pistons, it also will tell the block 36 2 in front of it, so uh, this one, that it should turn into whatever block it was. Um, that only is if it's moving in the same direction as the, um, as the piston itself. Um, but that's the case in, in this, uh, in this uh, case because the piston extended in this direction and now retracts again. So in this case it will uh, tell this block 36 to turn into uh, the solid block again. So that what happens here, it sets the lapis block. Um, and yeah, then next up uh, we just uh, got a situation where nothing happened. So in the next tick uh, no special, uh, nothing will happen. And in the last tick here it will then place uh, the block 36 of the sticky piston back to, yeah the uh, piston base block here and we are done and um, yeah th the the whole thing with the uh, minecraft drawbridge and such stu such stuff is um, and also instant block movement is all based on this behavior of sticky pistons that when a sticky piston retracts it uh, will tell the block 36 to in front of it to turn into a, a normal block again um, but it's only for this block uh, in front of it. So over here we built it up for the sticky piston, um, but two blocks in front, just to show that uh, that it doesn't work for the second block. And um, yeah, you place the torch, it turns all the blocks in front to block 36 piston arm and the two lapis blocks. Um, then in the next tick, uh, the torch realizes that it has to be turned off, the piston will start retracting again. So it will turn itself uh, into the uh, block 36 of a piston base. Um, and also, as it's a sticky piston here, um, tell the block 36 in front of it to turn into the lapis block again. But the block 36 two in front of it just stays uh, the same. And uh, has to wait till in the next tick its time has come to uh, set itself to a block again. And yeah, then one tick later the piston sets itself again everything like normal. So these are the basic behaviors. Next up we should get to um, the the full machine there and go through everything that happens there. We just had another idea how to show the difference um, between normal pistons and sticky pistons or the special behavior of sticky pistons. So in this case we have uh, two sticky pistons here but in one of them we will send a short pulse uh, over there and in the other one we will send a, yeah we will just uh, turn it on. And uh, for the one we just turn on, you will see uh, that both node blocks trigger the, at the same time. That's because uh, when it extends, it will turn the redstone blocks into block 36 in these locations, or like below there. And uh, they both will wait their time and then turn into a redstone block again after the, the normal countdown. Now for the fast pulse, it will turn the, uh, both of them into block 36 uh, down there. Um, but then the piston retracts again and we'll tell uh, this first block here uh, to um, yeah, set itself uh, to a solid block again while the second block back here stays block 36. So uh, let's just try it out for the uh, one with the long pulse. So you see it was exactly the same time. Now the second one, you can see there's a difference again. Let's do it one more time and then we will get to the other explanation. So for this one, both at the same time and there you saw it. The first node popped up a little earlier. So that's just another way to show this behavior. Um, but let's get to um, to the explanation over here. So we got the, the uh, draw bridge principle built up again. So we at first trigger this piston um, with a short pulse and then one tick later the other one here. And we want to show how it comes that uh, the slime blocks don't get moved back here. Um, so again we have built up the um, tick lines here. Um, then at some points we have longer tick lines where we uh, just had so many situations or so many changes in one tick that it would have been confusing to put them in, in one build only, so we just um, put them after each other. Um, but let's just start uh, back here. So when it gets turned on, at first, uh, so yeah, when it gets turned on we are in this, this situation, the torch gets placed, the redstone turns on, the repeater doesn't turn on yet as it has a tick delay, and um, yeah, the piston back here gets powered already and um, extends. So when the piston extends, so it's this piston here, so when it extends, it will check all the blocks which it can move. So that's all these slime blocks. And it will take all these blocks and uh, turn them into block 36 at the locations where they will stop later on. Um, and here we can see it. There's also one 
um, block 36 with the piston arm in front of the piston, of course. So we have this situation here. Now I just forgot, uh, I just forgot to mention, uh, the piston on the other side can be sticky or normal, both. Um, we will use a normal piston in this example, but it would work with the other one as well. So yeah, we had this situation now, the first piston, uh, the sticky piston on this side extended and uh, turns them all into block 36. Next up, the redstone torch uh, will turn off again, and the redstone will turn off again. Uh, so the repeater just realized that it has to turn on, as the repeater has a delay in there. Um, so therefore, the first thing that happens in this tick is that the piston um, back here realizes that it's, or gets, gets an update that it has to turn off, and it will retract. As it's a sticky piston which retracts, it will uh, remove the piston arm in front of it, so uh, this, this block 36 here, and also um, will tell the block 2 in front of it, uh, if it's a block 36, to set it block again. And that's what we see here. Um, it removes the piston arm and um, yeah, sets the slime block again. And also, of course, it uh, creates a moving block for the uh, piston base itself um, in this location. Now, in the same tick, but later on, the repeater will uh, turn on the other piston, which is a normal piston in this case. So um, it extends, um, sets the block in front of it to the piston arm, and now that's where the trick happens. It will look for all blocks that can move, and that's only the slime block here, because the other slime blocks are still block 36, they are still moving in this direction, and um, therefore when this piston gets triggered, it will look, see the slime block here, see I can move that, and recognize the block 36 over here as non-movable block. And uh, yeah, therefore will uh, not consider to move them as well. And um, then, then it will just take the slime block, set it into a block 36 in, um, in, in front where it will stop again. Um, so over here, and that brings us to this situation in total. Um, now that's where the trick happened already. So we just built up the rest to show um, how all the block 36 turn into normal blocks again, um, but yeah, that was the important part for now. But next up, then, um, let, 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 let me take a look what will happen next. Yeah, of course, uh, the timer for the slime blocks on the side here, for the block 36 on the side here, uh, went down. So uh, they will turn into normal blocks again, so they will set the, block, uh, the slime blocks again. Uh, then even one tick later, um, the, the um, repeater here realizes that it has to be turned off again with the normal delay. So therefore the um, piston here retracts again. It is a normal piston in our case, so uh, in the case of a normal piston, it will remove the, um, yeah, the extending, uh, or the, the, the piston head. Um, and yeah, not do anything with the block 2 in front. It wouldn't matter if it would do anything, so as I said, we could use a sticky piston there as well, uh, but it doesn't in this case. Um, then in the same take later on, um, the uh, sticky piston and the, the slime block uh, will both be set to normal blocks again as their timers went down. Um, so we can see, where did it start? So this sticky piston started retracting in this tick, and then it's uh, one, two ticks, so it has to set itself uh, to, to a normal block again in, in this tick as well. And um, where's the slime block? So the slime block uh, was moved in the blue tick as well, in the same tick obviously, because it's stopping at the same time again. So it was moved by the normal piston in this tick, and then one, two, and uh, it has to get set to a normal block as well again. Um, so by now we only have this one block 36 here left. Uh, this one started um, just in the green tick here. So it has to wait one tick in which nothing else will change. And then in the last tick, it finally sets this block as well. And uh, we end up with this situation. Uh, so to summarize it real quick, the thing is, uh, the, the trick is the special behavior that um, sticky pistons, uh, when they retract, set the block in front of it, or the block 36 in front of it, to a solid block again. And therefore we can come to a situation where uh, a structure gets moved but a part of the structure, like the one block in front of the sticky piston, gets set to a block again already, so that it can be moved again, and therefore we can, can uh, break off a block from, um, from a structure. And I think we want to show that as well now. We build it up over here. 
uh, it's just the same principle. So we have a slam block structure and um, using this trick, if we send a short pulse at first in, into the piston down here, then into the piston up here, and then uh, again a pulse into the piston down here, it will um, yeah make the slam block break out of the, um, the other blocks. Um, because it will at first move up the whole thing, then the sticky piston will move down the whole thing, um, but uh, retract again, and so the only blocks that get set already is this one, the other ones will stay block 36, so let me just uh, use some class to represent that. So it gets into this situation after the piston up set triggered, and then the second pulse in the piston down here will cause the, the piston down there to extend again and move it up, and so we broke one block out of a structure. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty interesting behavior. I wouldn't even call it a, a real bug. I mean, it's uh, it, it has been in the game for a long time with the sticky pistons that you could do the, the um, instant uh, block movement and all that stuff. And I would say it could, could be quite useful to, to be able to break structures apart, right? So um, I guess that's it um, for today. Just wanted to explain, explain how this, uh, this drawbridge works. So thanks for watching and see you next time.